currently I live in Strathroy, Ontario, um, due to the whole COVID thing and um, kind of hitting reset after finishing my master's in Toronto. Um, but I'm likely going back to Toronto soon to start a PhD program. I am currently the camp director of Rainbow Camp, which is a summer camp for LGBT youth. And um, we are held in Northern Ontario, but we get kids from all over Canada and the States. So that's my job. <laughs> I was a camper in 2007, a CIT in 2008, and then I worked at Pierce Williams, I believe up until 2014. At camp, I was, Ooh, well, CIT to counselor, counselor, and I did programming. So I was the craft lady at one summer. And then I did, I don't know, we all kind of took turns doing all sorts of programming stuff. And then I was the medic for a year. And then I did integration coordinator. And then I was medic again. Um, and yeah. <laughs> oh, and world camp. I did world camp stuff as well. growth. Okay, I think my favorite camp song is Give It Away uh, because it is one that um, we were there when it got written and we were, it's my favorite camp theme. It was my first year on staff, but it was also my favorite camp theme. And I think of that theme all the time. Um, Give It Away is such a I don't know, it's like that letting go, but also generosity and, you know, karmic goodness that I think of on a regular basis. So um, not just the song, but everything that it reminds me of. I love Give It Away. I don't even know where I am today, really. I'm just kind of um, floating a little bit because I went right from high school to undergrad to grad school and throughout all of that I've done camp and so um, I'm really passionate about dance I was always a competitive dancer and then I did my undergrad in drama and English which set me up really well to do my master's in dance where I studied um, dance therapy for transgender youth um, where I integrated my passion for camp into my other passions of the arts and I'm hoping to um, study more in my PhD and think more about like activism and things like that, um, which is really, you know, I didn't know when I started my camp journey when I was, I don't know, 13 or 14, that I would be a camp director now. Um, and I don't know, Pierce Williams added to that, gave me confidence and grew me as a leader. And then just, it kind of guided me to Rainbow Camp where I grew to be passionate about um, so many other areas like integrating arts and activism together, which is what I hope to continue studying. Yeah. I've been thinking about that. My best memory of Pierce Williams, um, I think, would be, I, I have all these wonderful memories of me with my campers and leading things and moments where I realized I could do something, an accomplishment. Um, but when I come, when it comes down to it, like when you're a camp staff, uh, you're there for the campers. And so I kept coming back to when I was a CIT. Um, at the time, it was very much you get to sample all the best parts of camp. And I remember it was pouring rain one night and the counselors and all my group of CITs, we were under this tarp that had collapsed on us. And they let us stay up late and we were just singing every song we could think of. And um, whenever I think about making a positive situation out of a negative one, I think of that because it is... Um, you know, it's pouring rain and we could have been miserable, but we were all soaking wet under this tarp thing and singing and laughing. And it's to this day, one of my favorite camp memories of every, you know, from that summer till now, I've been at camp every summer and I still think of it all the time. <laughs> Pierce Williams taught me a lot about work ethic and what it means to not just be a good employee, but to be a good person. Um, and a lot of that comes down to, and it's the mantra, the do what needs to be done mantra, that I now use with my staff. And um, when I was a teenager, and it was during the year, not at camp, I would think, oh, do I, would I do this for the campers? It, if it was something I didn't want to do, yeah, I would do it for the campers. <laughs> and so I was like, this mantra of like, do what needs to be done, just kind of like, I thought about it a lot. Um, but now I've integrated it into my life and um, teach it to my, my staff. So that, you know, that because it, it just encompasses, you know, initiative and, um, 
not being stagnant, like kind of always wanting to do something better, do better and um, do something better for somebody else. Do what needs to be done for everybody. It's not just for you. And so I think about that a lot and it's not just, it's still work ethic, not only in my camp professional career, but also just as a, you know, a productive human <laughs> outside of camp. I have gotten so much good advice from so many people. And I think that there are certain moments where people will say something, they don't even mean it to be profound. And then it really aligns with what you need at that moment. Um, so I've, the other day at work, at the other job, I work at a factory in town. <laughs> and um, I was upset about something. And um, one of the girls had said to me, you know, there's always something else going on that you don't know and you don't see. And it kind of gave me some patience and I've been really thinking about that lately, but like those little offhanded, like um, things that we don't even think about that can really like impact somebody. Um, and, but I don't know, my aunt told me once when I was a child is, and I've been thinking about this a lot too, when I think when it comes down to fundraising for um, rainbow camp is um, always ask. She just said, always ask because the worst anybody can ever say is no. Like that's the absolute worst. And if that's the worst, then that's, that's not that bad. So always ask. And um, that is what made is like, just thinking about that is what's made me a good fundraiser, a good activist, um, you know, a good speaker, lots of things that I now do as part of my job and part of my passions. But um, yeah, just always asking because the worst they'll say is no. And even then, you know, you've put something out there into the world that might come back to you in a better way. Um, than the original ask anyway. The best advice that I've ever received was, um, <laughs> was from a professor in first or second year and I was writing a paper about activism and feminism and wanting to change the world through art. And um, I was like, how do I do this? I feel like I might, you know, I was so worried about making somebody upset and if I, you know, and um, my professor was like, here's like a hint when you're doing activist work you will always lose you're always gonna piss somebody off and i think of that a lot because um if you're too scared about what people are gonna think or how they're gonna respond or um misunderstand your intentions when they're you're trying to do good you're trying to you know make a positive change but you can't <laughs> because there's always gonna be somebody who doesn't like how you said it or you offended somebody a little bit but um you just have to keep a really good intention and keep being true to what your actual work is and so and it was really good advice i think of it all the time <laughs> i have been taking a break from fun reading for a while <laughs> um like i'm about halfway through a book on my bed uh bed stand um but I would recommend right now, because I've been reading a lot of um, trying to gather books as resources, I want to start an LGBT online reading group um, for our campers like kind of during the year. Um, and so I've been trying to find like really positive um, LGBT literature as a part of like, you know, it's Pride Month and it, it, there's a lot out there right now. So I've been reading a lot, like kind of researching and reading young adult <laughs> queer literature and trying to figure out what might be good for this like book group thing I'm thinking about. Um, and other than that, I've been reading a lot of academic articles on social anthropology and figuring out what kind of research am I going to do for my PhD? I don't know. I'm figuring it out. <laughs> So the people of Pierce Williams always have changed my life in more ways than they realize. Um, and so I would like to nominate um, Emma Pipes or Roots um, because she was the leader that I got to shadow when I was a CIT and um, really taught me a lot about what it meant to be a really good counselor. And I still look up to her. And the other one is another really strong role model that I admired a lot when I was um, a counselor. And that is uh, Hogan, because she's just wonderful. <laughs> People should support Pierce Williams because it is really where um, I believe faith is integrated in one of the most um, positive ways I've ever experienced. And that is where it's not, um, through being a Christian role model, it's not, I don't know, it's not It's not about like what you say or what you do, um, it's just, how, it's about how you are. And so the role modeling that's there is really, really strong. 
and um, just being in nature and faith and spirituality um, integrated into programming um, through everything they do is, um, I think, teaches kids more about faith and self-discovery in um, a more naturally occurring sense, I suppose, than um, being told what to believe, allowing kids the space to create and learn for themselves the beauty of creation, the beauty of themselves, the creation that is themselves, um, and trying to figure out, you know, what is this world we live in and who am I and I matter is such a beautiful thing that I always got from Pierce Williams. And I think that a lot of campers bring that home too. And that is what needs to continue to happen.